Good morning. Well, I did get some sleep. We got up at 10. Just checking out the room here. Actually came out great. What you're seeing is not paint marks. I was freaking out too, and believe me, I'm seeing way more on the camera than real life. It is reflections and shadows from all the different light sources. I was like, what the hell? There's two coats on, there's no way I'm seeing roller marks. But no, it's just, <laughs> it's just the light. It looks absolutely beautiful in person. So happy with that. Let's check out, I haven't actually looked at this yet, how the second texture application, oh wow. Okay, again, I, I can see it on camera, but I cannot even see those lines in real life. Oh, just a little, little strip here, a little spot there. All right, so I'll just touch those up with the brush a little bit there. Oh, that came out great. Yeah, that second application was definitely needed over here, especially. Can't even tell. I, I see like a, a dark stripe on camera, but that is not in real life. Okay, very happy with that. Cool. And touch this up a bit more. Again, you can't see it in real life. Nice. Okay. Oh, hi, Chloe. Want to go outside? Where'd you go? You gonna help? Come on, let's go outside. Chloe's having her breakfast. And we are almost out of paint. Definitely have to go and get probably 10 more gallons today. That's about a half inch left in there. <laughs> it's pretty good timing. So I've got my office, three bedrooms, and the guest hallway and the master bath to do. So yeah, at least 10 gallons. Ikea should be here within the next few hours. I'll tell you what, today is going to be a major unboxing day and then a no paint rest day. My joints are so stiff. I feel like I've been eating salt. I'm just so puffy and swollen. My fingers feel like sausages, even my left hand and my knee. Oh, I, I need a, a little break from the painting routine here. So before IKEA comes, I'm gonna get all this crap off the top here that I've been using uh, as a workbench. Man, that worked out well. This is like the perfect height for me for a workbench. It's about the same height as the tall kitchen counters. I built the shelves up here. For the dresser, oh, it's so much easier than being down on the floor. The floor is really hard on your joints, man. But this was great. Anyway, I can get this unboxed, get the cardboard out to the garage, just set the couch, you know, out of the way for now. This is ready to go. I just need to tip it over. I was going to put pads on it, but I've already got felt pads on the bottom, so that's really handy. And I can get that cardboard out of here and clear up some space because I got another one of these chairs coming in. I'm gonna put them in opposite corners. One kind of facing here, one kind of facing there. Couch in between, table, big area rug. We got two bar stools coming for the corner here. But I'm not gonna set anything up until the house is painted because we're, I'm tracking dust and dirt and paint. And I gotta go back, paint three rooms and back there. So, before anything's really set up, I need to mop the whole house, and then I can lay down stuff like rugs. Oh, I'm working on a deal for a huge cabinet humidor for this room. This is going to be my shooting space for product photography. I'm not doing any people in this house. And my cigar storage room. I'm, I'm moving away from cooler doors. So I'm, I'm in the middle of uh, negotiations, but I will eventually get a big cabinet humidor. It might take up three quarters of this wall or so, like a commercial unit, and it should be about seven feet tall. So that whole wall there will be cigars. And then I'll probably put my, oh, you know, now I'm not sure because that window kind of screws me in both fronts. I can't put the humidor there because I don't want the sunlight heating it up. And, well, I, I guess I could put my shooting table here. It's not like I shoot in the early morning anyway. So, yeah, that'll be fine. So I'll put my shooting table here. 
Um, actually more like here because <laughs> there's lights that go behind it. And mm, man, now we got to think about it because I'll have a big soft box here and here, and that'll be right in front of the humidor. Uh, maybe over here. <laughs> I don't know. This isn't a terribly big space. I'm trying to combine multiple things, and that's the problem. If it was just the shooting space, it would be perfect. Just the cigar space, more than enough. I'd help put in another couch in here, but mm, that's going to be tough. Got a closet behind there. That's just going to be storage, but this isn't going to be a bedroom, so I'll figure it out. Maybe, maybe the humidor over on this wall have to measure the, the width. That's probably about six and a half feet or so. That might work. And that would give me just walk-in space. And then I could put my shooting table over there with a soft box here and a soft box there. That was my original plan. I think that's, that's what I'll hope I can do because it is slightly longer this way than this way. I'd really not want to put the shooting stuff facing either of these directions because that kills my backspace for some of my lights. Yeah, that's what I'll plan to do. Cabinet here, which should come out to about here. That's still about three feet to walk into the room. Yeah, I think that should work. I'll have to measure. Anyway, that's the plan. <laughs> Plans change. Oh, I wanted to see how these stripes came out or rather disappeared. What you're seeing there is, again, just light and reflections from the blinds, but I specifically wanted to see if I can see any distinctions from where I sanded those lines, and I do not. Okay, very happy. There were two big ones up top. I don't see anything. Nope, nothing. All right, well, that makes me happy. Can't believe how much better this entry looks without those weird mustard stripes. <laughs> it's. I'll tell you, it is finally starting to feel like home. I don't feel like a house is really mine until I customize it, I repair it, I you know do something and I really know it. And after this kind of project, you know every freaking inch. I filled in two little nail holes. This is just from house settling. Now I can't even see them. <laughs> I don't even have to paint them, that's cool. Anyway, there were two little spots somewhere around here where the nails had just pushed through a bit and they chipped off some of the ceiling. That's what the white stuff is there. So I just peeled it off and filled it in with spackle and, you know, smoothed it with my finger. I can't even see them. <laughs> Easy peasy. But like I was saying, it's not until I really know every inch of a place or I've built it, modified it, repaired it, whatever, that I feel like it's really mine. So. It's starting to feel like home now. I see a couch. So it's packaged really well. It comes in this big outer thick protective plastic coating, completely surrounded by cardboard. These were on each side and then long runners, two of them here around the top and the bottom. And then underneath it's still completely wrapped up. Looks like some just minor assembly to do, just uh, zipping on. The cushions looks like i don't know what that is under there but nice impressed aha it's the feet just gotta bolt them on there we go chloe approves there we go it's got a slight canter to it i don't know if it got tweaked in shipping or it's the floor got about an eighth of an inch gap i can easily shim it no matter what the problem is, I'll have to move around the room, see if it changes any. It may just take time to, you know, assume level shape with people sitting in it. So not worried about that whatsoever. And the instructions do say it takes three to four days for everything to fluff out and come, you know, to a nice smooth shape. But it's super comfy. And that's not the final position. It's not going to be against the wall. It's going to be a foot or two out. So I've got surround speakers going in and it's just going to be out of the way for now. All right, let's get this chair in and boxes out. There she is. Tell you what, if you want ultimate comfort, 
this is it. No joke, we sat down in it and we looked at each other, said, this is the one. So comfy, just to sit there as a nice chair. But wait, there's more. Beautiful chair. Oh, so supportive. Perfect for my frame. Long cushion, very firm, perfect armrest. This is great for watching TV. Oh, plenty of room. This is a big chair for a big person. Or if you're a small person, man, you got tons of room, you know? daylight I'm making myself a running list here of every single little spot that I need to touch up just a little touch with a roller will fix all this stuff but I can't see it at all when the Sun goes down so it'll be a running list that's everything so far overall not that bad just little tiny patches here and there that I just can't see when I'm painting so I can just call they're gonna be here any minute now got this space cleared out for everything to come in I'm going to imagine that other recliner is going to be the last thing to go in. I may just have them drop it in the driveway and do it myself since I already know how to do it and I can do it alone anyway. And I'd rather just not risk damage, but we'll see. Depends on how good the crew is. And I guess this will be my assembly area. While I'm waiting, let's see what came in last night. Aha, the rest of my Lutron equipment. I think that finishes it off. And I know that is an iPad stand that goes on the side of the bed. It's got a weighted base and a flexible, like a uh, gooseneck kind of thing. And that's for the wife because she likes to watch YouTube and everything in bed. And we're not mounting anything to the headboard or the wall like we had in the old place. So that should look nice. Oh, I'm not gonna unbox it right now, but I'll show you it when it's set up later. Ah, and then I've got the four bedroom lamps. I can't assemble them right now, but they're real nice silver bases. And I'll put two in the master and then one in each guest room to start. Well, the delivery driver's definition of be there in 20 minutes is going on 30. <laughs> I hear a truck. This will be interesting. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna bring that chair in myself. Just locals. First load coming off. The fucker drops it. Oh, shit. Two coming in. It's beginning to look like Tetris. I already see like three days of assembly. <laughs> Garbage man is gonna hate me. <laughs> Another monster chair. All right, that dude in the red was just effing rude. Ran up, put papers in my face. You sign, print name. Okay, have a good day. Left. I was gonna tip him, screw that. Didn't even give me a chance. Grabbed the paper and ran back to the truck. Fine, dude, your loss. Crappy delivery, guys. Here's how you get an Utran into your house. Take the box completely apart, take out the internal bracing, take off the corner protectors, split the box. Take it right down at the corners so it all completely folds apart. Leave the cover on the chair. If you got stairs, make yourself a little protector runner out of some of the cardboard. And I'll be doing the same up there when I get it off the pad here. I'll cut off another little section to get it over the threshold. Use the cardboard to drag it where you want to go. Skates really easily. Cardboard's pretty much like ice. So I put it back first so I've got that thicker part towards the door. Now I'm going to cut off, I'm going to move it center of the stairs here, cut off this part of the cardboard. So I got one pad that it's on and it's kind of long ways. So I'm going to rotate, but it's going to go in up the stairs just like this. When I get up to the door, I can 
just rotate this a little bit and make it a V and that makes this part go through the door and it fits no problem. Slide it up any way you have to. Now I've got this to grab onto and just skate the whole thing back. We'll angle it when we get it in the door. It's a bitch, but it's doable, even alone. Well, that's looking better already. All right, the next order of the day, well, not immediately, but I need to get the TV on the wall and rid of the stand, because that's right where that chair is gonna go. <sighs> first, it's shower time. Then I'm gonna get some lunch, and I'll stop by Lowe's while I'm out. Take care of my short list, get my paint, because I'm out. Eh, I was wrong, I got both brushes here from Lowe's. I don't know why I tried the Valspar here, but anyway, this is the good brush you want. Okay, successful trip. I got another bit kit and some extenders since I wore out the one I had in there. Two more brushes, should more than last me the rest of the project. A new toilet seat, like I said, wanted a nice soft close. They have one in the guest bathroom, just not in the master. Well, want a new one anyway. Another matching doormat. So now we've got three out there matching on the lanai. And I got this piece of shelf. What I need to do is create a shelf for my center channel speaker because I was going to put it on the mantle, but the mantle is only like maybe half of this deep. Far too small for my center channel speaker. It's, it's about the size of this shelf. So what I'm thinking is rather than actually put on a shelf with brackets and it look ugly, I'm gonna use the mantle as my brackets and I'm going to screw this down at the rear with just a couple wood screws, countersink them, fill them in. Channels, the uh, center channel will be on top of them anyway. So this will basically just be a mantle extension. And you may not even see the edges. The speaker itself, uh, I think it's just a tad bit over the size of this. So, you know, that'd be perfect. But white will match anyway, no matter what. And then I got what should be the last 10 gallons of paint for the other half of the house. Okay, our mantle is 60.5 inches wide. The shelf is 23 and three quarters. That leaves us just about 18.4 needed on each end. And it looks like this will be just a little bit longer than my speaker, which is fine. I mean, it, it matches the look, so it's not a big deal. Um, does this actually match the white or is it brighter? Let's see how this Yeah, that's fine. So it'll go somewhere right about there, and that gives me the extra depth to set the speaker on there, and I'll just screw it down with a couple screws, fill those in and paint them, and you'll never see it. What is that? Oh, command strip residue. Huh. I'll have to get that off. Not ours. Well, that is not command strip residue. Some jackass used epoxy. I'm having to use a razor scraper and just take off a thin amount of paint. So I'll have to touch this whole bar up just to get this off, but it is rock hard. And there we go. Touch that up with paint under there, but that looks like it should work. Centered it, centered two screws. Should be solid. Got some filler in there that'll turn white when it dries. No need to even paint. Let's see if it fits. Perfect. Just big enough. Got room for the base ports. Got room for the wires. Well supported. You can see why the mantle doesn't work. <laughs> Didn't feel like this toppling. Okay. Uh, next is that. Well, this might be a slight problem. I have a fairly irregular stud installation. We've got a stud on each end and one right through the center. It's just a strong magnet. Find drywall screws. Right down the center. That's gonna make it a little tricky to mount the bracket, which is a two-piece. May have to find some kind of adapter plate or rig up some kind of intermediate bracket. Oh, 
that's the TV bracket, and obviously that's not wide enough to span to the outermost studs, and I don't believe I can just mount to the center. So, I may need to run two horizontal braces to those outer studs and then mount this to the braces. Or, I have to look up if this is even possible mount it to one or the other side to the correct two studs and then have the TV hang you know way off on the end I think that would be okay I'll have to double check I'll look it up online but I also need to see how much overhang there is here because I don't No, there isn't enough I think there's only about four or five inches if I do that that's not enough to mount the TV to, which takes up the majority of the mount. All right, scrap that idea. And by the way, yes, I know there are mounts designed for center stud insulation. However, they do not have a tremendous weight carrying capacity. And I just don't trust them with a really big TV. I'd rather have the kinds that mount to at least two studs. All right, so here's my plan. I need something. Uh, is there such a thing as a 2 by 8 <laughs> I think that'll work. I need something at least too thick to give the stability. I need it 48 and a half inches wide and at least seven and a half inches tall to give me enough space and clearance for these. That gives me about half an inch on either side of the center line of these bolt slots. So back to Lowe's. Okay, so Googling the nominal size of a 2 by 8 it's 7 and a quarter. That's just enough. So that should work. So it's going to be quite a while before I can really go through the whole order and take an inventory, but we already know they screwed up the order. It looks like they've shorted us one of the decorative couch pillows and gave us three extra bed pillows. We just ordered two queen and two king for two of the guest beds. And obviously we've got more than that, and the wife already took one of them. So there's definitely gonna be some corrections. So we've got a red oak here that would work very well. Six foot, one by eight by six, 35 bucks. We've got a poplar, which is only 22 bucks, same size. Uh, we've got some premium pine here, getting cheaper. 1920 that's an eight foot though I'd have to cut that down a little bit in the store these are all like ready to go they're perfectly smooth ready to paint stain whatever I'm all I'm gonna be texturing it and painting it so I don't need anything that refined and coming down here I find the exact size I need within a half an inch I can fill in a quarter inch on each side with filler just to make it look pretty Actually, just this little front section here, where it'll... Oh, shoot, you know what? I didn't measure the depth. Um, that is a good question. 578. Yep, that's going to be the one. Found a nice straight one. Okay, now I need some screws. Got some lag bolts. And right as I want to get out of the car, got our nice afternoon rainstorms. Actually, it's a good thing. It means we don't have to water the lawns. The wife said stop for ice cream. And while I'm in there, I'm gonna get some beer. Yep, that'll work just fine. Oop. <laughs> so now I need to get it textured and painted. And I've got leg bolts. That'll go two in each stud. And then the mount will go in between the two studs with its own leg bolts. Perfect size. I'm getting pretty good at matching that texture. All right, now I need to figure out where I need to mount it vertically. And for that, I need to figure out the height of my speaker. I think I'm gonna use just this bottom line. It'll give me a nice little gap there. And we need to measure the TV and figure out the dimensions for the mount. I also don't want to go too low. I was considering going below this natural ledge and butting up really close to the speaker. However, 
the dude put it in that junction box so high up, he must have had his TV halfway between the top and bottom here. I want it as low as possible. I mean, it's nice being up high, but I don't want to be cranking my neck up. So the TV is 32 inches high using that bottom ledge. It's just above the junction box, so that'll hide that nicely. And it's wide enough to go a few inches up, uh, on both sides. So it'll actually be in between. Really won't even see this, so may not have had to do that, but oh well, I want it to look good. So I found the center, 16 inches, split it three and a half for the size of this, set my bottom point right there, marked it on both sides. Now I need to dry some drill, some pilot drill holes to actually find the edge of the studs. So I make sure that I'm getting as much bite as possible. And I'll just do that anywhere behind where the board is gonna be so they won't be visible. So I started towards the outside there and just kept drilling in until I didn't hit stud. And it took four holes here until I passed straight through drywall. So knowing that the stud is an inch and a half thick, this one definitely hit stud, that didn't. The edge is somewhere in here. That first hole will be perfect right in the middle of the stud. And the same thing over here, just took me one more hole. So anywhere around these two holes will be right near the center of the stud. Transfer those positions to the board. So those will line up to where I need to be once I put this on the center point. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pre-drill these holes and paint this board. That way it'll just be ready to bolt right up. And I'll pre-drill once it's up on the wall into the drywall and stud behind it. And then that'll be ready for the lag bolts to actually bolt in with a ratchet. I almost forgot about the center stud. Same thing. Found the outer dimensions of it and transferred the marks down. While the paint's drying, I can put this together. And there's a new iPad mount. Fully articulates, it adjusts vertically. It swings out of the way easily. This whole thing rotates and swivels however you want to put it. She likes watching it in bed, so it'll be over her like that. And it's on a tension arm, so once you put your device in there, it stays wherever you put it. Mostly plastic, big, heavy weighted base. It's made to go on the floor, obviously. And uh, not very expensive. So far, so good. It's like a big spring clamp here for your device. This is a quick disconnect. Just holds it out of the snap and it rotates. Pretty cool. Oh yeah, and this extends it so you can put whatever you want in it. Ratchets in place. First world problems. Mounting plate mounted, ready to go. Now I need to figure out the right spacers and attach the mounting points to the TV. So I went for the biggest spacer combo that they've got to give me the most room for the tilt. Mounted straight and level. Well, that was a complete fail. I just got it up there, only to just now realize I don't have enough depth well, that was a complete fail. I just got it up there, only to realize I don't have enough space because of this drop-in. This is mounted to this surface. I was calculating it mounted to this surface. It can't even touch. So I'm going to have to get a completely different mount, one that can extend out and give me some clearance. But it wasn't all in vain. I needed to get that mount board up no matter what, but luckily that was a very inexpensive mount. Darn it. Oh well, a couple more days wait. Back to Amazon. And with that, good night guys.